What's up guys, Brad Chapel here on the Ross Barnett Reservoir with my buddy Dalco Turner. We've got a little special treat for you guys. We're gonna go through and uh, play with some hummingbird settings. Really fine tune a hummingbird for your boat. Dalco, kind of tell us what you got on your boat here. Um, my setup is two Helix 12s, um, both Mega SI size scan units. Um, also have hummingbird Mega 360 um, on this boat along with Garmin LiveScope. Should be a fun day. Uh, we're gonna go out and try to find some new areas that we don't know about, mark them, and kind of really show you how to fine tune electronics to find fish in a new area. Uh, right now it's in the fall time, so good time, good bite, good times hopefully ahead. There you go. Let's do it. Guys, we're about to get on board here and go back out. Dalco, uh, I see you've got different colors on your unit here. Kind of explain to me what you got going there on that. So with Hummingbird, they make a uh, Lake Master chip. Majority of the lakes in the U.S. have been scanned by Hummingbird. Um, so this is, you can set it up to target the specific areas of water you, you like. We've got my green shading here and then the red i've got as a danger zone um you can go into your chart settings whenever you have a lake master chip in there you can set a shallow water highlight and i've got mine set at three foot so everything from zero to three foot is highlighted right now you can go in and change it um so now everything is highlighted up to six and you see back here where everything highlights um, red, everything up to six foot. So um, I usually run mine three to four, just know that I'm fishing Barnett. I know where to run, where not to. Um, then you have your green highlight here, um, which is kind of your target area. If, you're, if it's a certain season, certain um, depth of water that you're wanting to target, you can go in right now i'm set anywhere between 8 and 11 feet so everything on this card between 8 and 11 feet is highlighted mm -hmm. every, everywhere on the map it cuts out a lot of dead water quickly. it cuts out a lot of dead water quickly if you're wanting to target a specific area of water to side scan you can go in and if you wanted to go 10 to 15 feet of water you're looking for a little deeper water then you can look out and your map's going to change. It's going to highlight the green of 10 to 15 foot of water. As you can see on Ross Barnett, there's not mm -hmm. a majority of deep, a whole lot of deep water except your river channels. But that's a very neat feature that Hummingbird has with their Lake Master and Lake Master Plus chips. All right, what exactly unit is this right here? This is a uh, Helix 12 uh, Mega SI uh, Gen 3. They've uh, came out with the Gen 4 since then, but this is the Gen 3. I started out with a Helix 9 Gen 2 and have since upgraded to Helix 12 Gen 3s. So what do you want to target today? What are you thinking? Uh, this time of year, I would say anywhere from 8 to 12 foot of water. Um, and that kind of gives a wide range on Barnett. So, mm -hmm. you know, after we get out there and kind of get started, um, we may adjust that a little bit to kind of narrow it down, but once you get out there, you'll see it's, it's, there's a lot of 8 to 12 foot of water oh, on, yeah. on Ross Barnett. Feel it as soon as I ride into town. This is where I go to slow down. Miles and miles of soybeans and corn. Alright guys, we're going to run through some sensitivity settings or just general settings on your hummingbird. So we got our active pane is the left, so we're going to be working with what's active over here on the side scan side. 
So we touched earlier on setting the range, uh, running out 100 foot, 70, 60, whatever you want to run. Um, give you more detail on what you're looking at on the bottom, what you're going to get used to looking at. You also have your sensitivity. So you can adjust your sensitivity kind of for your water condition. And this may change daily while you're out. But I just set my sensitivity. I run mine kind of high up around 14. Um, then you've got your contrast to where you can lighten it up some. That looks pretty good right there for what I'm used to looking at. Um, let's see here. Of course, we had our chart speed we talked about earlier. Your colors. Um, you can run different colors. And me and Brad were talking earlier about it's all in what your eyes get used to. So you can run green. Um, all kind of stuff. Some stuff I would never even dream of, of using. But I've always just went with the default amber color. And dynamic contrast. You can turn it on. It brings in more detail. But I usually just leave it off. So there's that. You have some quick options. As far as you can take on the helix and just hold down the view button. And this brings you up to a quick system. So you can go to whatever your sonars are. So you can go through your different views, uh, turn them on and off. See, so DISI view. So you can choose a view and go to it very quickly from that direction. Your charts, whatever charts you want to go to. And this is down image. We haven't spoke much on down image today. And then your system settings. So you can go to your system status. Make sure everything is running good there. How often do you try to come back into your updates? Updates, for a long time I never updated. Um, but here recently I've got, to, I've got to update and every time that a um, software update comes out, I go ahead and put it on there because there's been some, some pretty good updates lately. Uh, they gave a few more options on your unit. So I've, I've started upgrading every time now. The, as always, whenever you're, we'll go back to map there. And that's one of my quick keys is just a straight map. But you can hit menu twice and that's gonna bring up all of your settings that you can go through, setting alarms, um, your display frequencies, um, you can set them to mega, you can set them to 800, 455. I prefer to keep mine on mega. Uh, surface clutter. If you're seeing a lot of trash on the screen, a lot of interference, you can move this up or down to clear up your picture on your surface clutter. And that's the basics. of what I keep mine on. Noise filter, you can also filter some more, more noise out if you need to. I always just keep mine down around one. Like I said, there's all kinds of stuff that you can... Let's get out there and get. actually kind of play with it and learn what they're doing. It's time on the water. Get out there and play where you're unit. Um, you know, learn what you're looking at. Find an area that you know where structure is um so you know there's a stump on a ledge go out there and scan go all different directions around that stump see what your side image looks like and understand what you're actually looking at on side image whenever you go by it um, just putting in time with the unit that's a um that's a big big key of everything also another quick key on the on the helix unit what area you want to hit <clears throat> we'll see where you ain't got no marks go right over the side of caney creek here it'll look pretty clear there yeah i mean there's stumps all over in there oh yeah well, we can hit it come 
まだ全然そうい、ん、うのいいかそれで今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、今、I can zoom it in to where it brings those contour lines in to where you can see them really well. Uh, if I wanted to back out, which usually I do starting out, just to get into the area, I'll mm -hmm. set it. I'll set it there, and we'll just kind of start start going from that point. Now I've heard live uh, side scan explained a couple different ways, and I've got it in pictured in a certain way on my head. But how do you envision when you're looking at side scan? You know, uh, you're referring to what you're looking for? <clears throat> well, what you're looking at when you're looking at this screen. Okay. So what I'm looking at right here is pretty much just a clear bottom. All mm -hmm. right. So you're going to have your more shallow stuff closer. Your sonar is shooting out to the sides. Um, one thing to remember, and you'll see in just a second as we run up on a ledge, one side of the screen will turn black. Mm -hmm. um, you'll have your shallow side. And then the other side is where it drops off the ledge. Um, sonar reads straight out. It does not read downhill. So if you're wanting to scan on what's on the ledge, you'll have to get out away from the ledge and scan uphill. Um, but what we're going to do is we're just going to run the line. So some of this may be dark, some mm -hmm. some may be shallow. We're just going to kind of run the run the general area. In you kind of see it right here going in. Yeah, there's a little contour right uh -huh. there. Um, that's actually a marker pole we just passed and we're looking at a stump right there. And what I look for is, is tall returns. Um, the longer the shadow goes, the taller your uh, structure is going to be. Right. So right here, as you can see, this center water column, it just uh, went from where we were running in the river channel where it was deep and then it narrowed down. So we got in shallow water. We're in 3.9 foot of water right now. We went from about 22 to mm -hmm. three and a half to four foot um, going out across here. So right here, we've got a piece of structure right here on, on this. So I'm gonna change my screen over to left side active and I'll take my cursor and move it down to that stump and hit mark that makes a waypoint mm -hmm. right there that I will go back and look at later on. And then we'll just continue on in the same area. And I know you like doing it as well, but one of a good thing to do if the fish ain't biting it, I tell people all the time is just get out here and scan and look for things. If the fish aren't biting, that's the best time to do what I call homework. Um, and I try to do a little bit every time I'm out here, if I'm in a new area, if I'm leaving an area, mm -hmm. um, I'll side scan it on the way out. I'll find something I want to side scan on the way out. Um, but learning learning this lake, um, there's what we were talking about earlier. That's the ledge mm -hmm. right here that we were talking about where it drops off into the river channel. That black portion is all deep water. That black portion is where it's dropping off the right. side of that ledge right there as we're fixing to run around and get on this other other ledge. And you can see where it shallows up and you can kind of see it, same thing as coinciding with the map over here. You had deep water and then we come back into nine and you can see where it comes back into that nine foot of water right there. Mm -hmm. We're just gonna cruise through here and see what kind of structure we can lay our eyes on and mark. It's kind of a new area to, to me. Good thing I don't think about this spot too. We've got a kind of, of a bank over on our right hand side. So it'd be a good area to fish if you had a really high, high wind. 
coming from the east. Yeah, if you had a good east wind, it would definitely be today. Of course, is it was supposed to be a straight west wind, so it wouldn't wouldn't be a great bank to uh, fish today, but also be a good spawn spot mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. All right, so we got a little structure down here. You know, you could recognize that as maybe an old stump. It's not doesn't give off a very high signature uh, shadow right there. So that's not something that typically I would mark. Um, you know, if it's not a whole lot in the area or you've been in the area a while and there's not a whole lot in it, you could mark stuff like that just to go to it to see if fish are actually holding on it. Right. But that's not normally something that I would, I would concentrate on. And what we're doing here, I've got my range set up at 100 foot left and 100 foot right. So on a big unit like the Helix 12, you have a whole lot of screen to play with. You can adjust your side range. Um, so I could go in to the side range and if I want to make stuff look bigger mm -hmm. um, or get more detail to what you're scanning, I've got it set at 75 each side. So we're taking 150 yard, 150 foot strip coming down through here but that's also where you need to be very careful at what lines uh, you're actually running going down through here because you're not taking as wide of a shot of a wide of a shot down through here. So, like I said, I like to run I like to run mine on 100. That's just personal preference. I just feel like I get more yeah, more right. bang for the buck whenever I make right. a trip through an area. Get your eyes trained to look at certain things too. The more you use it at that 100 foot, yeah, you kind of get to get used to what you're looking at, what what things are. Especially going back and looking at them later with live scope, you can remember what you just scanned. Um, you know, and there's days I'll go to a new area and scan an area. I'll come back as soon as I get done scanning. I'll mm -hmm. come back and start fishing the yeah. stuff, the stuff that I just scanned. What about speed wise? I see you're going right about two and a half, yeah, three. Um, normally I travel three to four uh -huh. um, is normally where I scan at. And one reason it's backed us down into the two range is where we're running into the wind. Mm -hmm. um, so you could idle the motor up just a little bit. Um, not being familiar with this area, which I, I know is a high stump area. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't want to get too, too fast with it. But you can adjust your returns with it as well. On the menu in here, there's a chart speed. Mm -hmm. So right now it's returning at five. So that's saying I would be running five miles an hour. So running at three right now, I would back it down to four. I like to keep it one above mm -hmm. um, the mile per hour I'm running just in case there is any variance in there, but it still gives a, a good return for what you're looking at. But you wouldn't want it, you wouldn't want to run it all the way up to 10. It's, the chart's gonna start moving faster. It's gonna start blurring stuff. Right. And then you don't wanna get too slow with it either. So you just wanna try to match this or be very close to, uh, slightly to what over you're running. Then. Yeah, slightly, slightly over or match what you're running there. So we hadn't found a whole lot in this area. There's one little stomp or something that somebody mm -hmm. set out right there. But you know, if there's not a high concentration of stuff in an area, that's usually one that I'm just going to leave alone. Mm -hmm. I'm not going. I'm not going to be back to that area um, to really waste waste any time fishing that area. So we'll come back. We'll come back to the map. We're getting back out here. Going to be some deeper water with some ledges. We'll kind of make a pass through here. Just kind of see what we see what we've got in that area. So all these contour lines on the maps. That's usually what I target. Um, contour lines dropping off into deeper water. Right. Um, river ledges, anything of that nature. That's kind of what I target. So I'll run, you know, I'll run all these lines. Now you, you say about chip. What chip do you have in this unit? This is a Mid-South um, Lake Master chip, which contains Alabama, Mississippi, uh, Texas, Oklahoma, mm -hmm. uh, Louisiana. So any lake that has been scanned by Hummingbird, and you can go on their website and uh, see a list of lakes for each chip that's on there to make sure that your lake is on there before you purchase the card. Um, but that's the chip I run, is a, is a Mid-South. I had a, um, I started out with a Southeast chip 
which did not include uh, Texas, um, which I wanted to get over and start doing some fishing in Texas eventually. So I went ahead and purchased the uh, Mid-South chip. Cover it all. Cover it all. All the areas that I'm gonna fish. I know we got one stump over here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like a tree. <laughs> Like it might have had a little something. Let's see here. Which one are you talking about? Yeah, right there. I just found some stumps along this ledge and I went ahead and marked those, see where the waypoints showed up back here. We're just kind of running down and we'll come back and look at them shortly. You can see right here where the little drop off, and there is some stumps. You can see the shadows um, off, so that may be a point of interest to come back to and just peek at whenever you come back. And you can tell right here, it also coincides with the map of where that little lip came out on that ledge. It's like a pretty good, pretty good stump right there. Okay, Dalco, we got one stump that has piqued some interest. How will you fine tune it to actually tell if there's fish on it at this point? You can take, move your cursor down to it, and just hover over it, and you can hit your plus sign up here. Mm -hmm. And you can zoom in on it, zoom down, you can kind of magnify. I mean, you can get all the way down to where you can see the roots. Yeah, you can see the arms. Yeah, you can see the arms of the roots coming off of here. Um, this one actually is not really showing fish signature uh you can see a few dots here where there may be some fish but you can't see what's on this shadow side on the back side mm -hmm. and a lot of times those crappie like to hide in those uh on the dark side of things um especially depending on which way the sunlight's coming from which of course this is just sonar going across it but that would be something i'd want to come back and look at with live scope mm -hmm. um just cruise back by it and scan it with live scope to see uh what might be sitting on that ledge or on that stump. I guess we can circle back around and check some of those points. So this little check mark right here. So as you can see, we're we're running our megahertz is on um, mega. That's our mega image. If you want to change your megahertz, you can just hit that little check mark. So now we've changed it to a range of 405 to 505. Or here comes 780 to 840. And you can see the different ranges here of what we're what we're looking at and what each one looks at. The 840 actually does a very good job of picking up detail. And then we're back to back to Mega. Mega's gonna give you a little bit more return, but the sonar beam doesn't come back as fast. So from what I've been told, the lower the megahertz you run, you wanna use that for your farther out scanning, but I've just never used the 405 and the 505 very much. I just keep mine on. Okay, what were you doing right now? All right, so the spot we marked earlier, the stump that we were referencing earlier, it's that waypoint uh, right there, waypoint eight. So what I'm doing, we got our nose into the wind, getting positioned on it, coming back to look at it with live scope. So I also run a Mega 360 on my setup. Mm -hmm. um, so as I'm coming up, it's scanning in a circle, uh, pretty much side scan, except this is going you know moving along with me so my waypoint starts up here so i can see it come into the screen i've got my range set at 80 feet so i know i'm within 80 feet of my boat pointing straight toward it uh, you can also see that reference uh, over here coming into it so what we're going to do we're just going to ease into this stump um, and you can see that stump start to come onto the screen i got my set at 60 feet we're within 60 feet down here 
So you can see this stump start to come into the live scope. We're just gonna troll up here real easy and just see if we start seeing any fish, fish signature on there. It kind of helps you to save time. If you don't see any fish here, what you gonna do? I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not fixing to sit here and um, put a minnow down there or a jig down there all day and just sit on this same stump hoping that, that a fish shows up. Ball of shad swimming around. Yeah, we got a ball of shad back here behind it. Um, it appears, you slow the pan out, you see a fish swim off mm -hmm. of it. So you see these bright spots on your live scope that lets you know that there is fish on here. There's a couple on the back side. Um, there are a few fish sitting here. So this would definitely be one that I'd want to want to drop a jig on. You've got a fish sitting up here shallow, a couple up on top. Do you dial in your range at this point? or I don't. Personally, um, I leave mine at 60 because a lot of the times I'm just moving, um, scanning around, panning my transducer back and forth looking and I just want as much range um, on my on my pan optics that I can find on my live scope whenever I'm searching for structure. So I don't I don't dial it back in uh, on the 1222. You can of course you can dial it back in mm -hmm. um, very easily. Just turn of a knob. Uh, I know people who keep theirs out 60 70 feet, and then whenever they get in on a piece of structure, they'll zoom it back into 30. Uh, to make the fish bigger, it gives you more detail on it. Me personally, I normally just leave mine out there at 60. Um, in my mind, I've gotten used to what size the fish are at that um, at that range, so I just leave it there. So this actually looks like one stump and then turn around a little bit and there's another stump so this is actually two stumps together but it's not absolutely loaded by no means no it's not absolutely loaded but there are some fish there that you could catch off and some may be hiding down in these roots mm -hmm. um, a lot of times your bigger fish will stay down in there it's kind of a risk risk reward type thing you can put your jig down there but it may not be coming back but then you could also pull a two pound crappie out of there as well. All right, tell us what we're doing now, Delco. All right, so we were just rolling through here and found a stump that looked like it was pretty loaded with fish. So I'm just gonna circle back around, get positioned, get my nose into the wind. See if we can pull a few off this stump real quick. We're pulling everything you're using. Tell us about your setup here. This is just a Bass Pro spinning reel. Um, Got a H and H, this their new pole H and H War Pig, 13 and a half foot rear seat rod, um, bonehead tackle stump bug, some jigs I poured myself with a split shot up above it, just kind of as a reference point that I use for uh, seeing my jig, uh, locating it on live scope. Looks like you got a little loop knot, and that's it, a little loop knot. Just make sure that jig can wiggle, wiggle back and forth in the water and doesn't get stuck straight up and down. Let's see what we can do here. If I can what about, get back on this what stump. pound test are you using? This is a 10 pound, just a um, suffix. Uh, 10 pound is all I use, mm -hmm. just the uh, clear line. For a while I used the high vis and um, I just ended up going to the clear with, um, with live scope. I don't have to locate my line as much. So I just went back to a clear line. Seemed to get a few more bites off of it. I mean, it may just be all in my mind, but sounds good anyway. I see you purposely facing this boat into the wind. Is that right? Yes, purposely facing nose into the wind. That way you can boat control this key using live scope um, or fishing anything. You got to get in there and because if you start on live scope and you're facing away from the wind, your boat's going to be spinning around. You're going to be trying to adjust, keep your transducer on it. So the more you can keep your nose into the wind, um, the better it's going to be just holding on what the structure is that you're trying to fish. I saw the jig go down there.
nearby. Do that time. Yeah. You're me a lot. I can tell that's a female fish. <laughs> yeah. Can make her mind up what they eat. She's in her mood. Bunch of shad. Bunch of shad moving in. surface. And it's a shell. <laughs> a thousand right there. This, this place is loaded with shell. Fish playing with it. Uh -huh. He's attacking it. to compete with natural bait. <laughs> it is. Got a buffet line sitting out there. All right, guys, we're wrapping up the day. We had some storms move in on us. Hopefully, you got some really good tips. And, Dalco, thanks for your time today. Oh, I appreciate it. I enjoyed it. Um, you know, like we talked about, just get out, get on the water with these units. Um, you know, you can find structure everywhere, all over any lake you go to. You can find structure to go back and fish. And you can't mess this thing up. Those are restore default. Yep. You go back, get restore default. It'll change all settings back just like they came out of the box. And uh, so, if you think you can mess them up, you can. They'll, they'll go back right back to factory settings next time. All right, guys. If you got any kind of questions about a Hummerbird unit? Put it in the comments, and we'll get somebody answered. If not Dalco, somebody else. A lot of good information given today. But uh, subscribe, like, and comment. Appreciate it. About a mile from the Big Muddy River, the place I love.